Man, today's video goes from zero to insane like that. Hi friends, welcome to today's bonus badge cam lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host as always, John Correa. And I'm your co-host, Mike Williver. Today's video comes to us from Jacksonville, Florida. The Mantis Blackbeard is an innovative rapid trigger reset system for your AR-15 pattern rifle that makes your dry fire much more effective and fun using your rifle with your sights and your trigger. It integrates with the X-10 and can help you improve your carbine shooting dramatically. Check it out at the link below. Batch cam here from the officer. Uh, this officer is on a crime abatement patrol in kind of a rough part of town. Sees a guy who doesn't have his seatbelt on and initiates a traffic stop. Let's listen into his batch cam. How you doing, sir? Uh, my first impression, my All right, so you didn't have a seatbelt on. I know you probably put it on later, but you didn't have a seatbelt on when you came out on to uh, that road over there. Just a second, That's fine. No biggie. Sorry about that. Nah, no problem, man. You got your ID on you, man? Okay. Okay. So you live in Tallahassee. In Tallahassee? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. I rolled back with my family. I just left my graduation this past weekend. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. Why are you so nervous? Eric was 1054 since when I had current. Oh no, I'm just scared of police. I haven't been pulled over in Jacksonville the whole time I lived here, so this is just. Yeah, that's fine. Well, I mean, you shouldn't. You don't have to be that nervous, my man. So you got anything in the car or anything like that crazy? Because, I mean, I can tell you that you, just by your mannerisms, you know, you're doing all this, a lot of wild stuff that you weren't even, you know, what I mean by wild, I mean, here's what I mean, is that you're doing a bunch of movements that make no sense to what I want you to do, which is just find your ID. You know what I'm saying? You keep reaching and moving. So what you looking for, man? I was looking for the registration. I don't need your registration. Uh-oh, -uh, no. So do you have anything in the car at all? Uh, yes, I actually have my firearm. Okay, that's fine. Well, hop on out for me. And, uh... Can I grab the receipt for my firearm? No, I'll get all that in just a second. I want you reaching. <coughs> Where's it at? Uh, in my jacket. In your jacket? All right, hop on out for me. And then the receipt is right there. That's fine. I'll get it in just a second. Turn that way for me. No problem. There you go. That way. You got anything else in the car at all? Because I see, like... Flakes flaking off of you. No, sir. We just got to roll in the blunt? No, sir. Okay. Why do you smell like the way you smell? Um, I'm actually smoking hemp. Okay. You smoking hemp? Yes, sir. Okay. You got anything else in your car at all? No, sir. Nothing illegal? No, sir. You sure? Yes, sir. Okay. You mind if we search your vehicle? Uh, no, sir. You don't mind? Um, I do mind. There's nothing. No reason for me to search my vehicle, sir. I have my legal firearm, and mm -hmm. that's about it. Okay. That's fine. Well, um, given the fact that you, whoop, stay still. I'm oh, sorry about that. Um, given the fact that you had marijuana flakes come off your shirt the way they are, okay, that, that's a no-no. You don't, um, you don't have a marijuana car, do you? Um, no, sir. Okay. But I know that hemp is illegal in the state of Florida, sir. But that wasn't hemp that you had flicking off of you. Um, it was, sir. Okay. Well, that's fine. Um, is there, you sure you have nothing else in the car at all? No, sir. Okay, what kind of firearm do you have in your car? Um, a Glock 26. Where is it at? In my jacket, located right there inside of the jacket. Okay, you have a concealed weapon permit? Um, no, sir. It's okay. in the jacket, concealed. Well, it's in the jacket. And according to the law, doesn't it have to be, I know it has to be put away when it's inside of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. And it's away inside of my jacket, inside of the vehicle. So is it in the holster? Um, it's inside of the jacket. No, so With that the means... jacket's away. Nope. So what it means is it means that in the state of Florida, it needs to be either in a glove compartment locked away in a, a uh, in a uh, holster, or it needs to be in another locked compartment inside of a holster, legally, to be able to possess it legally in a vehicle. To con Unless you have a concealed weapons permit, then you can carry it any way you want to. The reason being the concealed weapons. Okay? All right. So... By you carrying a firearm in a legal fashion, 
You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's not good. So I'll get the paperwork for your firearm. Can okay. I grab my phone? Yeah, you can grab it. All right, so um, let me get the paperwork so I can see if your serial number's on there, ring your serial number and all that kind of stuff, put you in the back seat of my car, okay? So you don't skedaddle on me. Sound good? Yes, sir. All right, come on. Can I walk by myself, please, sir? No, I'll hold on to you. I grab my ID. Nope, leave right there. Okay. My ID. Nope, leave right there. Okay. HQ-1033! Officers did wait until additional backup arrived. I'm just speeding this up for the sake of time. And unfortunately, this young man, uh, even though they did their very best after they finally are going to get him into custody with some more backup available, uh, and they got their trauma first aid kits and issued as much first aid as they could, but he did not make it. Uh, and, and that did cause some outrage in the city, though I think we've got some lessons to work on here. Now, I'm showing you this uh, third officer who decides to clear the vehicle, and one of the things that you can see there is it, it points out the fact that the gun, that's the subject's gun, is actually on the console at this point. You can see a couple other pictures of it there. It wasn't before all this went down, and so yeah, it sure does look like he was trying to draw that gun and point it at the officer, and we're going to think about some significant lessons. Uh, I gotta be honest with you, the wackadoodle libertarian in me has got some things to say about this, but I also think there's some really important lessons with how cool and collected this officer was. Let's talk about him. I wanna start this discussion, Mike, and say that I I'm of the opinion that, man, at least as it relates to marijuana, this whole thing ends up being over the fact that this guy had apparently 200 grams of marijuana with a scale and all that stuff, so he's an unlicensed pharmacist. Okay, fine. And, and I think we need to change our laws so that, you know, stuff like this doesn't end up happening. Yeah, if marijuana had been legal in Florida, then there wouldn't have been probable cause, and this would have probably ended this traffic stop unless there was some other end to get into the car. I'm not sure what the officer suspected he had or was, was going on, but uh, I, I got to say my, my position on marijuana has evolved over the years, and I just don't understand why it's still not federally legal at this point. It's just... You know, to, to get caught at the border with weed right now is barely even a sight, yeah. barely even a citation. I do think, I think that this officer handled himself incredibly well. I think he was polite. I think he was professional. I think that, uh, you know, he's looking for the probable cause. And, and I love, you know, as he's going, hey, man, who are you? Where are you from? I think he doesn't escalate the situation. And I think he, he really treated this young man with a great deal of respect. I concur. This is pretty much was my style of, of policing, interacting with people. I find you draw a lot more bees with honey than vinegar. So just treating someone like a person, being polite and courteous and kind and, and uh, treating them fr in a friendly manner is certainly the way to go. But however, comma, you still, the, the bad guy gets a vote in how these things end. And no yep. matter how polite you are, sometimes it's not enough to prevent a bad outcome like this. And, and okay, so the guy says, hey, I'm really nervous around police and, and all those things. Sure. Uh, okay, fine, I get it. And, and sometimes some people are nervous. I know I've been pulled over and it makes you nervous, right? Like I, you don't want to get a ticket. As a cop, I was nervous being pulled over by the cops. So it's just a natural reaction. So, you know, with all the headlines, I'm sure this young man was justified in feeling nervous and, and, and whatever else. But the officer's there to do a job and his nervousness was more than just perhaps right. the normal level of nervousness of someone on a traffic stop. And this is a good cop 
and he used that to try to get into the car and find what kind of contraband he might have. No, the guy says, I've got a legally owned firearm. Okay, fine. Officer decides to pull him out of the car. That's completely lawful for him to do that because now it's an officer safety issue. I, I will say here, you're going to kind of adjudicate a bunch of stuff on the side of the car here with the guy. He's detained in this moment. You probably want to put him in cuffs immediately. Yeah, we talked about this offline. I'm a big fan of handcuffs. That's what they're for. The handcuffs are, when, when you hear that sort of cliche line, it's for your protection and mine. It really is in some cases. And this is a perfect example of this guy's not free to leave. He's being detained. The handcuffs are just an extension of that detention to prevent him from doing anything foolish, which he ended up doing. So if, as an officer, as a deputy, if you're on a stop like this and you have a legal reason to do what you're doing, and you have a legal reason to detain someone, they are arrested, temporarily at least, uh, handcuffs are never a bad idea. Yeah. It's just a good idea to get him under control. That way he can't do the things that precipitated his demise. Now, I'm going to say this in a minute here, that this young man, um, I think he asserted his right to uh, in the Fourth Amendment well here. Is, mm -hmm. is that Now, there was a little bit of discussion. So do you mind if I search your vehicle? No. You don't mind? No, no. I do mind. I don't want you to search my vehicle. And I think it's totally fine. Whether you got something to hide or not, you know, when an officer asks if they can search your vehicle, they're asking for consent. It's okay to say no. That doesn't mean you're a criminal. It's okay to assert your rights. I, I, I'm not a big fan of asking for consent and when it's denied, all of a sudden now I have a reason to search. I'm not a fan of that. No, I, have a, I have a libertarian streak in me a mile wide. I get what the officer was doing and I think he was legal in what he did, but if you have a reason to search the car, don't ask for consent. Just do what you got to do. Because otherwise you're just going to have a roadside argument with the guy. Yeah. It's going to way that that's going to end up. And then potentially in court later, it's going to look funny that you asked permission, were denied, and then all of a sudden you have Did it anyway. Reason. Yeah. It's, it's just, <laughs> just don't do that. So, okay. I get the fact that, that the officer is now going to decide, okay, no, I'm going to search. He was trying to do it the easy way, right? But if you have a, a probable cause to search, you don't need to ask for permission. You have probable cause. Right? right, so the, the guy's got weed flakes coming off him. He's got a gun in the car that he admits he doesn't have a concealed carry permit for. Admits it's in the passenger compartment. All right, I got probable crime, cause that a crime has been committed. I don't need your permission. So, but he was trying to do this nice. All right, well, uh, again, and I do think this guy asked, "Did you have anything in the car?" A number of times. Well, come to find out, if you go read the news story, he actually has 200 grams of marijuana in the car with a scale and baggies and all that stuff. So, again, this guy's selling drugs. There's just almost no question about the fact that he's selling drugs. Uh, but I get it. Do you have to admit that you've done something illegal? No, that's part of our, our justice system. I do think, again, though, the officer's probably being a little too soft with him here, trying not to end up having a fight. And so this maybe could have been handled a little bit different. And, and enough force applied early enough might have prevented this much force being needed to use later. Yeah, we talk about this on the podcast with a lot of our LE guests that come on. Um, in fact, uh, Asa Keefe just said the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. A proper amount of force, or in this case, Detention applied early enough is, is an ounce of that is worth a pound of having to yeah. be dragged down the street and end up shooting somebody. And of course, do you want to sit and have a legal argument about the requirements for a concealed firearm in the state of Florida? No. Now, I live in a constitutional carry state. We both live in a constitutional carry state. This wouldn't be a problem in Arizona, okay. uh, and I think it shouldn't be a problem, in fact. But, okay, every state gets to set their own laws, and I get it. Uh, and, and I think, again, the officer's like, hey, man, I'm just going to sit you down in my car so that you don't skedaddle on me. I like that word, by the way, skedaddle. <laughs> that's, that's solid stuff. But now when the guy is being non-compliant, well, okay, can I do this? Can I do that? Whatever. Given the fact that he's been nervous, that bad stuff is happening, we know there's a firearm in the car, the officer has to recognize at some point, all right, stuff is going to go a little bit weird here, and then all of a sudden it does. So you, I, I, I'm going to guess the officer is ready for this to have gotten physical. Yeah, I like... Uh when I was on the street, when I worked gang task forces, for example, we had me and my partner had a nonverbal um, cue to, hey, it's time to hook this guy up. And we both knew what that meant. Um, you know, so having that with your partner and being like, this guy just needs to go in, we go in handcuffs. It's time for handcuffs now. Your partner can move in. He can grab one arm. He can grab the other arm. You can gently put him in handcuffs, put him in the car. And those cuffs can come back off again. But, man, this could have been avoided. Yeah, and, and at the same time, the perp is the one who gets a definitive vote in the outcomes here. And, and let me say this as a private citizen. This is wrong, guys. I get it. You might be afraid of the cops, but it's not going to get better running away from the cops and grabbing your firearm. Take the charges. I get it. He doesn't want that. He's got no prior criminal history. He's doing stuff he knows better than to be doing. He's a good college student, but just take the hookup, man, a instead of ending up dead. It is a much better thing when you're going to adjudicate that with the officers on the roadside. It's going to end up bad for you. I, 
Yeah. I sorry. I always wonder in moments like this, what does this guy think? How does he think this is going to end up? Does he think he's going to get away from the police? I mean, this behavior is just completely preposterous. It makes no sense to me whatsoever. And you know, we we saw the the other officer clear the car earlier. Looks like he was going for his gun. I mean, you know, this is just a terrible outcome. I think the officer did everything he could to avoid it, other than handcuffs. Yeah. And, and of course, banging on the window with your hand here, I get it, officer's trying to get inside the car. It's never gonna work. You can, no. you can smack that window with your hand as many times as your heart desires. Now I will say that the point from where this happens to the shot breaking here is only about a half second. You can see shots fired in the lower left side there. So, so at this point, he was trying to get in the passenger side because that's where he felt like the perp was and his partner was. Half second later, the shot breaks. So I, I think that the officer that is in the car right now says immediately afterwards, dude, he grabbed his gun and was trying to point it at me. So the officer then bails and shoots the guy. We don't get to see that because the officer who ends up doing the shooting in the initial physical struggle, his badge cam was knocked off. So we don't get to see anything from that, but it's entirely plausible and likely to me that that is exactly what happened as shown by what happened afterwards. So is this justified? Well, again, I think that the officer has the same right to defend their life as anybody else does. This guy was wrong to do what he did. I think that we could say, wait a minute, the laws should change or whatever, or maybe the officers could have used a little more force early in order to prevent this. But I think in the moment, the officer is justified in his actions. I think absent the gun, uh, you're hanging halfway out of a car being dragged along by someone. It wasn't like, this isn't the case of the cop jumping on the hood of the car. He was in the car trying to get the guy out. I don't think he foresaw the car starting to move. Therefore, uh, he's now headed at you know, 25, 30 miles an hour towards the side of a house. I, I think he's justified in using deadly force, the gun, take the gun out of the picture completely yeah, to stop is. this person from doing what he's doing, which is potentially cutting this guy in half with a car door. And now, uh, of course, I mean, I think it's kind of heartbreaking for the guy, you know, is saying, man, I don't want to die. Help me, officer. You know, I feel like I'm dying. I can't breathe. And, and I think nobody with a heart can watch that and go, gosh, this sucks, given all that that's happening. But I actually get that the officers here are hesitant to dive in on the guy because they don't know where the gun is. The guy's saying, I don't have it in my hands. His hands are empty, but I don't know if that gun's underneath him or whatever. I need some more help here before I get in on this guy. Uh, agreed. And yeah, any, any human being listening to this audio, your heart goes out to this young man. It's terrible. It's awful. Um, but you have to bear in mind, he precipitated the events that led to this. And... As, as sad and heartbreaking as this is, they can't go rushing in there immediately, not knowing where the gun is. It could be a ruse, it could be anything. They just have to do their job as professionally as they can, which is un unfortunately, the result was bad, but that's what they did. They did their jobs as best as they could be done. And I think they made the effort, right? So after the other officer gets there, okay, fine, we're gonna be able to approach the vehicle, we're gonna be able to approach the, the suspect, get him into custody, and then get him help. And they went and got their trauma kit and did the very, very best they could. But I think, again, the big thing that we see here, probably the biggest piece of evidence, is as the third officer comes up here in the end, and he's gonna clear the car, and you can see, again, that the uh, pistol had moved from wherever it was in the back seat of the car that this guy had picked it up and was it was now in the front and and it's not the officer who did that he's got his own gun clearly it was the perp so while do we like this kind of outcome no i hate this kind of outcome i do think that the officer in question was a a really good professional in in almost every capacity here i think he did a fine job and defended himself in the moment